Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quilt called Cotton Rainbow. This is one of Cozy Quilt Designs patterns and it's really fun and really easy. So I've picked out some nice bright grunge fabrics and I'm going to use a black background, not the light background that's showing here. And we're going to make just a beautiful rainbow colored quilt. I've picked out a whole lot of the grunge fabrics. I picked out 30 different fabrics. So this is what Moda calls grunge. It has a little bit of color variation. The red here has a little bit of purple. The orange has got a little bit of light. The green has some blue in it. So I've got 30 different fabrics and we cut them. My husband, Matt, does the cutting. So he's got a strip set here of 30 different fabrics and they're all a variety of colors of the grunge. So I'm gonna open this up and lay the strips out and then we'll pick some color flights to make our quilt out of. For this pattern, we need five fabrics in a range. So they've done a reddish one and a bluish one and a brown one and each color grouping has five fabrics. So I'm gonna to need to pull these apart and group them in sets of five. So I know I'm gonna have a green group and I know I'm gonna have kind of a tan gold brown rust group here. Those five will probably be one group right there. I'm gonna have a purpley group and I'm betting that that's the five. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Those look really good. I think these blues will go together so I'm just gonna sort this until I get five in each group. We'll have a pink group. So they're not perfectly sorted in the strip set. You have to take it apart and decide what's gonna go where. So we're gonna put them in color groups and then we're going to sort each group light to dark. Here's the six color groups that I have picked out. Each group has five fabrics and each group variegates from light to dark. So the light fabric has a couple smaller pieces and all the other fabrics in a group get cut a little bit longer. So I picked these light to dark, but I also picked fabrics that look nice next to each other. So all of these groups are going to go on this black background. The grunge has this distressed sort of look. I really like that look. The nice thing about grunge is if you decided that you didn't want this much going on in your background, you can just use the other side. So the other side is completely solid. The fabric is reversible, so you can use whichever side you like. And that same thing holds true for the strips. If you didn't want so much color variation in your strips, you can just use the back side. So I'm going to work with one color group at a time and I'm going to cut it into the subcuts that I need to make the blocks. We want to work with one color group at a time. So I've got the blue teal colorway here. Now the smallest pieces are going to be cut from this lightest print. So it gets cut by itself and then the rest of them are all going to be cut exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is put them on my cutting board and line them up so I'm gonna line up with one of the lines here and I'm gonna cut them all at the same time. Now you'll have to read the pattern to get the exact sizes of the subcuts, but all of these can be cut at the same time. Cut this guy separate. So do one color group, then move those aside, then do all the other color groups. All right, I've got all the pieces cut and they are laid out in order here. So these are different color groups and we're gonna take these over to the sewing machine and we're gonna get started sewing. Here's all the pieces I need for one block. There's just a few backgrounds and here's our nice purple colorway. So we've got a handy sketch up here to show us how to do this. But the block stitches up really, really fast. So I'm gonna lay it out here ahead of time so we can see what goes where. And 
and we're just going to add the background to each strip here as we go around to make the pieces a little bit longer a longer and longer piece of background and I don't want the backside showing so it'll look a little bit neater once we get it stitched up because you can't get the whole puzzle put together when you've got your seam allowances added but basically we're going to start here and then add this one and this one then we're going to add this one and this one so we're just adding colors on each side as we go we're going to start in the corner here the nice thing about the cotton rainbow pattern is that every block is made the same they're different colors but the procedure is the same no matter what color it is so we are going to be pressing the seams to the right and to the top so that went went to the right now we're going to add this piece down here after we sew it we're going to press that seam allowance up so every piece will fit on exact if you use your quarter inch seams and it goes really fast so this seam allowance is going to go up so all the seam allowances this way are going to go that direction and all the seam allowances this way are going to go up and that's going to help us a lot later on when we put our blocks together because our seam allowances will be going in alternate directions and it'll make it really easy to get the intersections to match. This is going to go on the bottom here. Now we need to sew the background onto this strip before we stitch it onto the unit that we've already made. So I'm just going to stitch this onto here. And all of these can be pressed towards the background. Now this will fit right on there. I don't usually use the ironing board until I get the block all the way stitched. If you feel like you want to stop in the middle, and iron, that's perfectly fine. Usually if I finger press a little as I go, it keeps the seam allowances facing the way we want them. Now we're gonna sew this onto here and then that will go onto the unit. And we're gonna continue on putting background onto the colors until we get the whole block done. Here's the last strip. Now once this is stitched on, I'm going to take it over and iron it. But before I do that, I'm going to check for threads that are sticking out in the seams within the block. Since I didn't chain piece these blocks, I've got a lot of long threads on the back side. So I like to check for those right now. So these are the ones I'm talking about. I don't get these very much if I'm chain piecing because I don't have long threads. But this one, it's got a lot of long threads, which is fine back here. But I find it saves a lot of time if you just check your block as you go and make sure none of those threads are sticking out here. Here's another one. Okay, I'm gonna give this a nice steam press and we have a lot of people ask about the iron we use. So we use a Rowenta. This is a German company that makes these and they've been making them since 1919 is when they made their first electric iron. So the nice thing about this is that the water reservoir is here in the base, not in the handle. So the handle is really light, but you can see the steam goes about six feet out, so I can really give a good pressing here. So we've got these seams going up and these seams here going to the side. And that will make it really easy to put our patchwork together 
because the blocks will then have seams going in alternate directions. Look at how nice that looks. So I'm gonna get it nice and flat. So I like to press it first just with no steam so that I can make sure that my seams are not distorted. And then once I get it the way I want it here, then I'm gonna use the steam. You can see the color variation here from light to dark. And the colors look really good with the black background. Here's another one of the blocks already stitched up, the pink one. And then I've got an orange one over here. So I've got these colors still to do. And you can see how different it looks from the pattern when you use the dark background. Since every block is made exactly this way and this block went really fast, we're going to be able to finish the quilt really quickly. Now I haven't found any fast way to chain piece these. I really found it's best to make block at a time because otherwise you can get confused with what piece goes where. So I would recommend making them just block at a time. You're going to be making three of almost every color. I think just two of the color flights you only need two blocks of because we're making the throw size which takes a total of 16 blocks. So we're going to make three of, I'm probably going to make three of all of them and then lay the quilt out and put two of the extra blocks aside. So I'm going to take the scraps, I have a few little scraps and leftover pieces, I'm going to make some sort of a pieced border. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but I'll be sure to show you when I get it all done. I've got all my scrap pieces here from the cutting and I figured out something that I'm hoping will make a really nice pieced border. So I've got them still in the color piles that we cut them in. So I'm just going to sew these together into a piece. So I'm going to grab one from each pile. I'm just going to put them in order. I'm going to pick up 24 here. So it doesn't matter which one I pick because I want kind of variety assortment but it's going to be one from each color pile here until I have 24. So there's six. Then I'm going to sew them into a strip unit and cut a couple of borders out of it. Now I'm not going to cut these to any particular length. I'm going to sew them into a strip unit and then cut them because they're all different sizes right now. And I think it would be a lot of work for me to line them all up and try to get them all cut one size. So I'm going to just sew them into a I'm going to line up the top and sew it into a really, really long piece. Then I'm going to iron it and then I'm going to cut it afterwards. And I think that's going to save me a ton of time. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is use a really small stitch length because I'm going to stitch all these little seams and cut afterwards. And I don't want those seams coming apart. So I'm just going to stack them up. So I'm going to start here and then put this one right next to it. So the tops are relatively straight. I will be recutting it, but I'm going to just line everything up at the top there and use a quarter inch seam. And we will press these all to one side. So I'm going to just line this up and it doesn't matter if they're different lengths. So I'm just going to keep sewing till I've got 24 in one long row. This is the last piece here that's going to go on. And I'm going to be cutting this really narrow. But before we cut it, we want to steam press it really, really flat. So let's take it over to the ironing board. Here's our strips and I'm going to cut two borders out of this. So I'm going to fold it. So I'm not lining up all of the seams, so I'm not going to have extra bulk wherever I cut but it's just easier for me to get it really accurate if it's not quite as long. All right, now I'm gonna line this up on my cutting board here. And I'm gonna line it up on a line. I'm not gonna cut on that line. I'm gonna move it over just a little teeny bit. So I'm gonna use a sharp blade. 
and I'm going to cut two borders that are one and a half inches wide. So I don't need, I only need three inches, but you can see some of these are really going to be close. So I think what I'll actually do is just slide this slightly over this line and then I'm going to use that line right there. So I'm going to use my clear ruler, put it on the line, I'm not cutting off much, and I'm going to put my weight on the end here because that's going to help me hold it. Now I like to use the plastic ruler over what I'm cutting so that it doesn't move. And I'm going to check right now to make sure we did get everything in the we don't have any short parts here because it was pretty skimpy, but it looks like we're okay there. Yep, we got it all. Okay, so now I'm gonna move over one and a half inches. I'm gonna use my weight again and give a good cut. So this is our border here. I'm gonna cut another one, but this is gonna be our border. And by the time we get our seam allowances, it's going to be just a teeny tiny strip of color and it's going to have black grunge on both sides of it. So I think that's going to give a nice pop of color. So I'm going to cut one more out of here, then I'm going to do the same thing again and then I'll have a total of four borders. We'll get those on the quilt and then we'll get it on the quilting machine. I finished putting the patchwork border on. You can see it here and here. So the patchwork was the same size as my patchwork quilt part and then I just added a little teeny bit of the black grunge to make it the right length. So this is just cut the same one and a half inches right here. It's hard to see because it's all the same color. Just a little bit extra there so that I didn't have to make the patchwork go all the way to the corners. Then I added one more two and a half inch black grunge border and I think that flame frames it really really nicely. Now for the back of the quilt I picked another grunge. So this is a newer product that Moda is making. It's grunge, but it's dotted. So it still has these distressed areas of different colors, but it's got the dots. To quilt this particular pattern, I wanted to use a bright color thread. So these were some of my choices. So anytime I put a quilt on the machine, I have to pick a thread color. And so what I normally do is get out some options, reel off some thread onto the top of the quilt. So let me show you. Here's the green. And I thought that would actually be a little bit too bright. So I've decided to go with a darker purple. And I've got a little bit lighter purple for the back. So here's the thread here that I'm going with. So the purple is going to show against these lighter colors. It's also going to show some on the background. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the thread to show a little bit. I've picked an abstract pattern for the quilting. And if you come on over here, I'll show you. I always try out a new pattern on the edge to see if I like the quilting pattern and if I like the scale of it. So I really like the swirls here against the geometricness of the quilt. So this is what I'm going to go with, but it was a little too large, so I've shrunk it down just a little bit. So I'm going to tell the machine to start and you can see what it looks like. I've got the pattern all programmed in, so I just need to tell it to start. This is the joy of having the computerized machine. I can program it to do the size, row, width, and height, and it'll come over here, and if it comes to the spot where I do want it to start, all I have to do is press go. The cotton rainbow quilt turned out really bright and really cheerful. I'm really happy with the quilting on it. I did kind of a swirly abstract pattern and it isn't taking away from the patchwork, but it's giving a little more movement. So you can see the pieced border here a little better. And here's where I filled in in the corners with the black. It's about 55 inches finished. It's a nice throw size. It's square. I don't often make square quilts, but this would work really well for a wall hanging. Here is the grunge on the back. That's the dotted grunge. Got a little bit of lint there. 
And you'll notice that I did the binding in the same grunge that's on the front. A lot of times I will use a different color on the binding, but this quilt probably would have been too busy if I had come back with another color on the binding. So I will often plan on using something for the binding. I was planning on using purple or green, but I like to wait till the quilt is all the way done and then give it a good look and say, does it look finished? Does it look like it needs to be have a bright color binding or a contrast binding? So this one looks better with just the solid binding. Now, the bright colors are really cheerful. It's a really happy quilt, but this does not have to be made in bright colors. So I've made another smaller version here, and this is all in batiks. So I've only used two different colorways. I used a greener one and a browner one. So you can just repeat two different colorways throughout your whole quilt. This is just four blocks and it almost looks like a wreath. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take this one home, use it on Thanksgiving and put the pumpkin pie right there. So this is a great project to use your strips on. Again, you need five different strips for each set of blocks. So I've got the five here in the purple and it makes three blocks. So each set of strips will make three blocks. So I used 30 strips here. You can make a twin, you can make a queen. I think the twin takes 50 and the queen takes 80. So it was a really quick, fast quilt to make. Thanks for watching our YouTube tutorial today on the Cotton Rainbow. Be sure to leave us your comments and your requests for quilts you would like to see us make. I've got a long list, but I am just having a lot of fun going through that list and making up new quilts for you. Oh